This video shows the recommended method to install loose tube cable into AFL's Apex sealed splice closure. Cable preparation lengths for Apex vary by cable and application. Refer to the written instructions or Apex cable length table located at aflglobal.com forward slash Apex. The recommended tools for the Apex closure are basic cable tools and a can wrench plus all locally required safety equipment. Remove Apex dome from box and press flash valve on top of closure to relieve all pressure. This first step is required when installing a new sealed closure or opening in field during service. Simply remove cap and depress needle to ensure all pressure or vacuum is released. Replace cap and tighten. The Apex base are six ports with orange port plugs, each holding the same diameter cable. There are also optional ground studs with removable bonding linkage between studs. This assembly includes a ground lug to attach to a shield bonding kit. Use the mount insert as a reference for port designations. Determine which ports are to be used. Ports 1 and 2 are typically used for backbone cable due to the ease of routing to the basket. Ports 3 and 4 are typically used for branches. Ports 5 and 6 are typically used for drop cable. Any port can be used for any cable as needed by the technician. This is a two ground stud model. Remove the locking ring, pulling the locking ring handle to disengage the locking tab from the ring. Once disengaged, continue opening the handle to open the locking ring clamp. The locking ring is expanded and easily removed from the apex closure. Adjust the apex closure until the mount insert and orientation key are facing up. This will ensure the closure slides out basket up. Now slide the apex base out from the dome. Place the dome in an area so that the O-ring remains free from dirt and debris. If the O-ring is contaminated, simply wash off with cold tap water. Apex can ship with zero, one, or six splice trays pre-installed from the factory. The optional Apex X2 closure stand will be used in this video. This stand allows the Apex closure to be secured in any one of six positions and provides maximum flexibility while working with Apex. The closure can be secured with or without the ceiling wedges installed to hold the Apex base directly to the stand. Simply place the base in slot of the stand and align Apex to be basket down. Engage and lock the two retention clamps securely on the base. Verify that both are locked and Apex is secure. Remove both Velcro splice tray retention straps. Remove splice trays from Apex yoke to allow clear basket entrance. Simply spread the hinge pin with a sheath knife or similar object and rotate Apex tray from the yoke. Repeat until all trays are removed. If Apex was shipped with an inner basket pre-installed, simply squeeze the two keyhole release tabs on the cover to lift it. Then disengage the locking tab with a sheath knife and rotate to release the second pin. Set aside all trays in a safe location until needed. Release Apex from the stand and orient as desired for cable entry. Ports 1 and 2 will be used in this video for entry of backbone cable. The closure will be on the stand with the basket upside down for ease of installation. To open the Apex ceiling wedge, depress locking tab and slide ceiling wedge down toward the bottom of the base release latch. Slowly rotate the top of the ceiling wedge from the base and remove orange port plug as wedge is released. Set aside port plug if a cable will be installed in this port. If cables are not to be installed, keep port plugs in place to maintain watertight seal. Manually depress both sides of base gel. Each time a sealing wedge is removed, manually ensure the gel compression screw is in the fully relaxed open position and extend the wedge sealing gel as shown. Set aside sealing wedge in a clean, safe location. If gel block is exposed to dirt or debris, simply rinse the gel with cold water to remove contaminant. 
If the base gel has been released from the base, simply replace it in the proper orientation with the locking tabs engaged in the bottom of the base as shown. Each Apex closure comes with a cable attachment unit kit, which contains the cable attachment unit, hose clamp and spur bracket for sheath retention. Strength member retention is built into each cable attachment unit. Ensure the cable is clean and free from contaminants prior to installing in the cable attachment unit. The cleaned area should extend from the hose clamp to the end of the gel exiting the base. If using armored cable, the armor layer must be retained at the cable attachment unit sheath retention point. When preparing armored cable, continue the rip cords one inch past the armor sheath end. If using double jacket cable, the inner layer should end as close to the armored layer as possible. Slide ground attachment into armor layer. Note the position of the cable in the cable attachment unit bracket prior to securing the ground attachment. The final position of the ground should put the ground lug on the side as the cable attachment unit is installed. Trim any strength rods to approximately 2 to 2 and 1 quarter inches. Verify the cable is set in place on the cable attachment unit. This ensures engagement of the retention screws onto the strength members and proper location of sheath termination. Be careful not to trap any fibers or tubes under the strength members. Ensure sheath is ending at the edge of the cable attachment unit and tighten the strength member retention bolt. Slip the hose clamp around cable as shown. The gear of the hose clamp should nest into the cable attachment unit bracket. As the hose clamp is tightened, slip the spur bracket in place. There are two orientations to install the spur bracket. Ensure it is installed on the cable with the opening end toward the closure. This device is used to enhance pullout strength. Guide the cable attachment unit into the base and route the fiber to the basket opening. Ensure fibers are not pinched. Lower the cable attachment unit onto its base alignment tab. Make sure the cable attachment unit retention bolt is properly seated with the hose clamp tail retained in proper position and then tighten with a can wrench. Secure Apex ground cable to shield bonding kit before or after wedge placement. Once the cable attachment unit and the hose clamp are secured, inspect the cable attachment unit to ensure it is completely seated. Make sure both base gel and sealing wedge gel are clean and free of contaminants. Depress base gel and elongate sealing gel as shown each time installing a sealing wedge. The Apex closure has sealing wedge engagement pins and wedge base mounting locations. Engage sealing wedge into apex base by mating two lower tabs in the port opening and slowly rotate toward the top of the closure. Once closed, depress sealing wedge latch and rotate sealing wedge into locked position. Inspect top and bottom of sealing wedge to ensure it is properly installed. For all cables under one half inch, install small cable bushing over cable and secure with supplied tie wrap. Make sure the head of the tie is in the opening on the bushing. Tighten to just close bushing, but not deform it.
Slip bushing up to port and engage the bushing past the gel fingers. This cannot be done if gel compression screw is engaged. Once backbone cables have been installed and sealing wedges are secured, release the apex closure from the stand and rotate it 180 degrees with the basket facing down. Be careful not to damage any cables, tubes or fibers while rotating the apex closure. Secure apex with basket resting on support and engage locking tabs. Secure fiber cable or tubes on basket close to the yoke using Velcro, foam retention or tie wraps. Tighten all six gel compression screws prior to final assembly of Apex.